All right. Hello, hello, Pacific Northwest Key Clubbers and advisors. I'm so glad that you are all able to join us for today's special event. I'd like to personally welcome you to our October 2021 Growing Your Membership webinar hosted by the PNW Membership Growth and Reactivation Committee, or MGRC for short. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Before we dive into our webinar content, we would like to introduce ourselves to you again. Hi, my name is Tian Nguyen, and I'm this year's chair for the Membership Growth and Reactivation Committee. I also serve as the Lieutenant Governor of Division 21. Our committee also includes MGRC Secretary and Lieutenant Governor of Division 30, Erica Wan, Executive Liaison and District Secretary, Allison Kang, Lieutenant Governor of Division 13, 15, 17, Ashley Tseng, Lieutenant Governor of Division 45, Jocelyn Salkson, Lieutenant Governor of Division 34, Julia Van, and Lieutenant Governor of Division AYS, Koshal Reedman. Now that you all know who serves on the MGRC, let's hear from all of you. Please type in the chat your name, division, and location. Hi, um, Justin Yi, South Bend, Division 38. Awesome. Riley, Division 44. Kim Tu, Division 66. Emily Leonard, our international trustee. Kyle Hansen, D65. Tara, Division 34. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Michael. <laughs> hi, Emma. Hi, Haley. Um, uh, hi, Sarah Collison from Anchorage. Um, hi, Ava. Hi, Naomi. Um, Caitlin, my division, uh, Aliyah, Div Division 45, Joy, AYS, Juha, Division 21, go bees, um, Brianne, Division AYS, awesome. It looks like we have a whole range of members attending from all over the PNW district. Um, now I would like to move on to the next part of our agenda. Thank you everyone for participating um, uh, in the chat. All right. While the past year and a half has been difficult for all of us, we were able to end the service year with 6,082 members, which is an incredible achievement. For the 2021-2022 service year, the MGRC has set a district-wide goal of reaching 9,000 members by District Convention 2022. One crucial aspect to our 2021-2022 membership campaign is ensuring that each and every club is involved in reaching our district's goal. Most clubs should have recently received an email from the committee with a membership goal that is unique to, to every club. If you've already set a membership goal that is different from the one we suggested using historical club data, that is perfectly okay. Please do what is in the best interest of your club. If you do not know what your club goal is, please refer to the spreadsheet that has been sent into the chat by Jocelyn. Please note that goals were not set for clubs that were placed in a COVID status by Key Club International, given the uncertainty about their operating status. Now the MGRC would like to proudly unveil our new recruitment video that was put together by our lovely district editor, Rachel Hagen. This video is a great tool for you to use to introduce potential new members to what Key Club is all about. Let's hear from our district about what Key Club means to them. Key Club has endless opportunities for you to grow as a person and a leader in your community. Key Club is a place that will provide me the necessary leadership skills that I will use later in my career. Key Club is global. Key Club is the key to our communities. Key Club is serving the community that I love. Key Club is to love and serve your neighbors the way you would want to be. Key Club has given me more confidence in my leadership skills. Key Club is welcoming. Key Club is a place where you can meet great friends. Key Club is community. 
Key Club is a way to build and develop life skills. Key Club is a way to build and develop life skills. Key Club is the best thing I've done for myself and for others. Sorry about that. Um, was that not the cutest video ever? I'd like to give a special thanks to Kazuma Itagaki, Lieutenant Governor of Division 27, for sharing his Japanese with us. If you're interested in featuring this video at your next club meeting, you can now find it on the PNW Key Club YouTube channel. Now, let's move on to the main section of tonight's webinar. During tonight's webinar, we will be providing a crash course on all that the new hybrid engagement toolkit has to offer, as well as the, as well as the homecoming campaign resources that were developed by Key Club International. There will also be an officer Q&A panel where we will hear insights from past officers whose recruitment strategies work especially well for their clubs. And finally, we will end the evening with an open floor Q&A. I recommend that you write down any questions that arise during the webinar so that we can answer them at the very end. Please note that our hybrid engagement toolkit has not been released yet. We will plan on sending it out to all officer Google groups, uploading it to our district website and promoting it on our district in Instagram within the, few within the next few days. I'll now pass it on to Jocelyn to take it away. Thank you, Tan. Um, hello, everyone. I am so excited to see all of you here tonight. Um, and I'm really excited to get into this toolkit content. So you may be wondering what the hybrid and hybrid engagement toolkit is. Hybrid refers to the use of both in-person and virtual settings that Key Club can use during the pandemic. While some Key Clubs are meeting and serving fully in person, some are still completely virtual or somewhere in between. The hybrid engagement toolkit is a collection of resources, tips, and ideas that have been developed by the MGRC to help make membership recruitment easier for clubs operating in different environments this year. Let's take a look at the table of contents for our toolkit. The first section of the toolkit will be introduced by Erica and I, and this section is titled How to Hybridize Your Key Club Year. Next, Kaushal and Tian will share with us what the post-pandemic planning section has to offer. Ashley and Julia will lead us through the Fostering a Positive Environment for Leadership section. And to end our webinar, Erica will discuss how we can use the new homecoming campaign resources created by Key Club International in September. Let's learn how to hybridize your key club. In this section of the toolkit, we have included a sample meeting agenda, energizer ideas that can be adapted to both in-person and virtual participants, service project and fundraiser ideas, and a guide on how to contact guest speakers. When developing your next meeting agenda, ask yourself this. If you were the one participating in these activities, both in person and virtually, would you think that they were productive, enjoyable, helpful, and inclusive? For example, if you are conducting an icebreaker, are virtual attendees still able to have engaging and meaningful conversations in the same way that in-person members can? If you are participating in a service project, have you arranged for virtual attendees to pick up and drop off supplies and the finished products? While these questions may seem like common sense, it's easy enough to get caught up in the excitement of finally being able to hold in-person events and not plan the hybrid component as well as we should. Uh, why is this section important? It can be tempting to simply set up a Zoom call for virtual attendees and call it a day, but this is rarely enough. One of the most important things to be conscious of when trying to retain virtual attendees during meetings is ensuring that they never feel like an afterthought. We all know what it's like to attend Zoom meetings and being on a Zoom call while other people are there in person can feel incredibly alienating alienating, excuse me. In the how to hybridize your key club year section, you can find information on how to avoid the common pitfalls of hybrid meetings so that virtual participants can have an equally valuable and meaningful experience as the in-person attendees. I'll now pass it on to Erica to introduce the energizer, service project, and guest speaker sections of the toolkit. Before Erica begins, let me change my screen so it is full screen for everyone, my apologies. Let me stop sharing for a moment. Uh, 
All right, now Erica can take it away for us. Thanks, Jocelyn, for your valuable insights so far. One crucial element of club meetings are the energizers, which are also called icebreakers or mixers. You may be wondering how you can adapt energizers to work the hybrid setting. In the Energizer 101 section of the toolkit, you'll learn that while some energizers are suitable for both in-person and virtual participants, you may need to consider hosting a separate energizer for each group. For instance, while your in-person attendees are engaged in an energizer that requires moving around in the classroom, one officer can lead a different energizer that is better suited for the virtual participants. This section is perfect if you're in need of an energizer ideas for any type of audience. Along with energizers, another important element of meetings are service projects and fundraisers. While the toolkit has plenty of service projects and fundraiser ideas that you can utilize, please be mindful of these three questions in order to perform meaningful service. Number one, what would you like to accomplish? So for example, Mordecai Club wants to hold a food drive. Second question, who is your target audience? For example, families in need of food. And last but not least, the third question, will the project track participation from people outside the Kwanis family? For example, students not involved in Key Club, school staff, and parents. Another great way to diversify your club meetings is by having a guest speaker. For alumni who participated in your Key Club, they can share how impactful their time at your school and club was and provide college and career advice. If you want to strengthen your Kwanis, female, Kwanis family relations, you can reach out to Kwanis from a division who can provide great insights on career planning and help members identify new opportunities for personal development. Circle K also offers great college application advice and mentorship. For tips on how to contact guest speakers, refer to the guest speaker guide section of the toolkit. Kasha will now kick us off the post-pandemic planning section. Thanks, and thanks, Erica, for the intro. In this section of the toolkit, you will be able to find a post-pandemic stimulus plan worksheet, promotion tips, a club marketing strategy worksheet, underclassmen retention tips, and additional marketing tips. These resources were developed with the intent of helping you effectively plan your club meetings and events as your club starts to emerge from the pandemic. Once pandemic-related restrictions are fully lifted, Clubs will need a plan for how to recover fully and get back on track. It is very important for officers to begin developing a post-pandemic stimulus plan now. If you feel overwhelmed about where to start, don't fret. This section of the toolkit features a list of questions your officer team can reflect on that will help your club begin drafting a plan. These include questions regarding membership, leadership, service and fundraising, marketing, and community. They also aim to answer one central question. What opportunities are available to your club as we emerge from the pandemic? Hey there, Tian. I think Morty has a question for you. He asks, how can I effectively promote my key club? Good question, Morty. If you're looking for promotional tips, the post-pandemic planning section has got you covered. We already know we can promote using the basics such as social media, school announcements, and personal invitations. But by using the unconventional, unconventional techniques mentioned in our toolkit, such as displaying divisional spirit during lunchtime presentations or hosting inner club events, you will surely distinguish your club from the dozens of other clubs at your school and gain the attention of potential members. On the very left side, we have Jackson Key Clubbers um, showing off the divisional pride at, the first, at their first club meeting of the year. On the bottom, we have Meadowdale Key Clubbers partnering up with their school's Essential Care Club to collect food cans, snack bags, and clothing. Now, I'll pass it on to Julia and Ashley to lead us in the Fostering a Positive Environment for Leadership section. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley. Can everyone hear me? 
Yes. Okay. When it comes to learning how to foster a positive environment for leadership, we believe that it's important to consider the resources related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI for short, conflict management, and how to work with different personalities. This section of the toolkit discusses how to successfully foster a positive environment and a sustainable environment for quality leadership. Ashley, look, Morty has another question. Why is diversity, equity, and inclusion important? Well, Morty, DEI is important because Key Club's core values include caring and inclusiveness. We want to include all of the club members to feel like they have, they can be true to themselves. It also helps with um, ensuring that it doesn't prevent any members from participating. We should all strive to become more diverse, equitable, and inclusive clubs. The following questions can be used to determine how cognizant your club is of DEI. For diversity, are the demographics of your community represented in your club? Is there a reason a specific group is missing? For equity, are the financial barriers presenting members from paying dues? Are there transportation barriers preventing members from participating in service opportunities at or divisional events? For inclusion, are you making certain accommodations so that everyone can participate in meetings? Do members from all backgrounds feel welcome? Take some time to reflect on these questions and see how our area your club is lacking in. If you're stuck on how to better address DEI, read up on our advice in our toolkit. Morty sure has a lot of questions today. He wants to now know why it's important to uh, address conflicts and get them resolved quickly. Good question, Morty. Although conflict is bound to happen, when disagreements among the officers or advisors remains unresolved, it can negatively impact your club. Sometimes it's difficult to know how to approach these situations in a productive manner. And if at any point during this year, your club encounters a period of conflict, feel free to refer to the conflict management section to guide you, as well as the working with different personalities section to prevent disagreements from escalating. We hope that all the advice we have given you in this section of the toolkit helps your club become a more positive environment for leadership and service. Now, Ashley has a brief message she would like to share with us. Throughout the toolkit, scenarios, questions are strategically placed to help guide and prepare you for specific situations that may arise when navigating the membership and growth retention toolkit. These questions are intended to help you better understand how the tips presented in the toolkit can be applied to your own club. Now I'll hand it back to Erica to lead us through understanding the homecoming campaign resources developed by Key Club International. Hey everyone, are you excited to learn more on what the Key Club International's homecoming campaign has to offer? Erica, Morty looks confused. Does homecoming refer to the school dance high schoolers go to? Actually, Morty, the homecoming campaign was developed by Key Club International to welcome home clubs that were inactive during the 2020 to 2021 school year. These resources are meant to help jumpstart clubs that were put on pause last year and to help all clubs recruit new members. We hope we'll guide and provide you with the resources necessary to smoothly transition into a year of in-person service. Here are a few sections of the homecoming campaign that may be especially valuable to your club. Leadership. Are you looking to further develop your servant leadership skills? Learn more on how to make an impact in your community? Kiwanis International and Key Club International have developed amazing programs like Key Leader and the Global Leader Certificate Program that you can utilize to explore those questions. By the end of either program, you will be equipped to serve your club and community in a more impactful way. Advisor training. For the incredible faculty and Kwana's advisors here with us tonight, we have not forgotten about you. There are multiple training resources accessible to you through the Membership Update Center. For our new advisors this year, the Coach Mentor Role model module is designed to specifically aid you in navigating your first year as an advisor. For advisors who have more than a year of experience, check out the developing, developing leadership through Key Club module. Now, Kasha will now lead us in our officer Q&A panel. Hello again. 
I hope you are excited to hear from our fantastic panelists tonight. These officers have all been successful in helping to grow their club's membership either before or during the pandemic and are here to share their knowledge with us. Please join me in welcoming Chanwook Park, 2019 through 2020 president of Jackson High School Key Club from Division One. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chanwook Park, so happy to be here. Um, it's been a really long time since I've actually thought to club, so really love the opportunity. Um, I am currently now a sophomore at, at Yale, uh, studying statistics and data science and possibly branching out into economics. Allison Kane, 2020 through 2021, president of Mountainside High School Key Club from Division 65. Hi everyone. Um, wow, a tough act to follow. I am not a student at Yale. <laughs> um, my name is Allison King. Um, like Kasha mentioned, I was the 2020 to 2021 president at Mountainside Key Club um, on Division 65. I currently am a senior um, at Mountainside High School and I serve as the district secretary as well as um, I had the privilege of getting to serve as the executive liaison for the MGRC committee. So I'm super excited that Tian and the committee um, have asked me to be a panelist. So yeah, thank you. And lastly, Gloria Fung, 2019 through 2020 president of Killarney Secondary School Key Club from Division 13, 15, 17. Hi everyone, thank you for having me today. Um, again, I never thought I'd be participating in a Key Club event like after high school as well. But right now I'm a second year at University of British Columbia in Canada and I'm studying business and computer science. So thank you for having me. We will have them answer questions in the order they were introduced in. If you have any more questions for them, please wait until our open floor Q&A after the panel concludes. The first question for our panelists is, what were some of your biggest challenges in recruiting members during your term as an officer? How did you overcome them? So I would say that the biggest a challenge that we faced as a board whew, way back when was um, I would say recruiting not only towards the general student population, but also recru recruiting in, I guess, the students that aren't as active in uh, school extracurricular life. So, you know, it'd be really easy to access the people, the kid that was really into school clubs, that had school spirit, that like read the flyers that were on the walls, right? we could get all of them but it was about the kids that like went went right home after school the kids that didn't really like going to high school and so that that kind of diverse group was kind of the group that we were really prioritizing when we were recruiting my final year as president and how did we overcome them uh, we overcame them through i would say really emphasizing to my board that we need to work to reach out to these people personally, um, wherever they might be, wherever you might find them, um, just to develop that kind of one-on-one -on -one relationship and be like, hey, you doing anything today after school? We have a key club meeting in the annex. We'll have Krispy Kreme donuts. We'd love for you to be there. And just kind of developing that kind of one-on-one -on -one relationship is I think a great way to do, to kind of get over that hurdle. Yeah, for my board, um, I would say that there are a lot of factors involved, but um, I would have to say that the prior state of my home club, um, I guess the board before was, um, I don't want to put it all on the board, it's not their fault, but I think that overall there was, I think, kind of a lack of um, structure slash organization to the club because um, Mountainside is actually a relatively new school. Um, this is only our fourth year opening. And so um, the club hasn't been very established for very long. And so I think that, um, you know, we are still trying to get things off the ground. And so um, the officers weren't really focused on, you know, always making the most productive or purposeful meetings. They are more just trying to get meetings out there because again, um, it was a new club. And so I think that um, a lack of purpose, you know, with the meetings led to a lack of spirit or a lack of, um, I guess, real idea of why key club, right? Like, why should I stay in this club? You know, why should I um, come to this club, you know, and spend my um, Tuesdays, you know, instead of being at home at, at school still, you know? And so I think that um, that was probably the biggest issue or biggest challenge in recruiting members. And 
as for how we overcame them, I think um, I think first doing an honest reflection about why you know we were having trouble recruiting members, um, which like again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, organization structure, you know, lack of spirit, I think, and then targeting those areas, you know, in, in the, its respective manners, you know, with organization and structure, obviously um, simple things like creating meeting agendas beforehand, you know, making sure that every single member walked out of each meeting feeling like they had done something useful with their time was definitely. Um, a big factor in how we kind of started to distance ourselves from um, what Key Club was like the year before and then showing um, um, students what the new Key Club was like. Yeah, and I think for my club personally, introducing the concept to Key Club to people who have no idea what it is with the, was the biggest challenge because throughout my explanation, the only part that stands out to them is the fact that you have to pay a membership fee. And since I'm Canada, the conversion rate from American dollars to Canadian dollars really drives up the price, which leaves a lot of people flabbergasted because in their minds, Key Club is just like a volunteer club in your high school. Like, why do you have to pay a fee to volunteer, like to dedicate your time to the community? It like it makes no sense to them. And I get that as well. And I think I even overheard like random people in the hallway complaining about it, saying that was the reason why they would never join Key Club. And it got me like really disheartened. Um, but you really have to emphasize and explain what Key Club is. You know, it's not just a high school club. It's an international organization with so many levels. We have the high school level, the university level, we have Kiwanis, we have divisions and districts and international boards and even conventions where people all over the world come and gather to celebrate service. And becoming a part of Key Club is like becoming a part of this worldwide organization where you even get an ID card, your certificate, your PIN. And we really had to emphasize that in the presentation that we did to new members that it's so much more than a high school club that you're becoming a part of something so much bigger and so meaningful and has such an extensive history as well you really have to market that and make that your selling point and of course if you do have the financials to do it it's also great to subsidize any part of the fee that you can yes those are all very good answers and it is always really cool to be part of such a large organization like key club um what are some successful strategies you utilize to recruit and retain members during your officer term? How can clubs incorporate these strategies into a hybrid environment? Um, yeah, so retention, retention, retention. That's, I think that's a pretty difficult uh, challenge that I think all key clubs across all million districts have faced, right? I remember my first freshman year, we started out with 110 members at the first meeting. And then by the end of by June, like we were down to like 20, 25. So that's definitely something I remember. Um, I would say that the most successful thing that we did as a board to retain members was I would say, this is gonna sound strange, but have less meetings. Um, I don't know what your guys' individual key clubs look like right now and what your guys' schedule looked like, but we used to have it so that we used to have like a meeting every single week, every Wednesday in a classroom. <clears throat> and it just didn't make sense where, what I mean by that is we didn't really get anything done during those meetings. We didn't really feel like we accomplished anything. We just feel like we had a meeting for the sake of having a club meeting. And that just, I think that turned a lot of people off. And so later on, <clears throat> when we started, when I started my term, we switched to bi bi-weekly meetings. And then later on when it became final season and whatnot, an AP season, we, we even switched to once a month meetings. And it was really focusing on the, um, you know, the quality over quantity of every meeting and making sure that people feel like that their time is being valued. And it was definitely a strategy that worked. We saw while we had fewer meetings, we had more people at every meeting. It's something that I'm definitely looking back on and I'm looking back on it, it was a great decision. Uh, now, how to close incorporate these strategies into a hybrid environment? That's a great question. And I am honestly so glad I never had to do this or I had to uh, lead a club through a pandemic. So more power to you guys. Um, but I think the same policy still applies, whether it's a Zoom meeting or a uh, in-person meeting, just less is more and focus on quality more than quantity. Because yeah, Zoom meetings, just press the link. You don't have to move anywhere, but... I saw one that spent an average of 13 and a half hours on the computer last semester while doing virtual school. Computer time, Zoom time is draining. 
Yeah. So I think the way that I think of recruitment is um, it's kind of it's kind of like the Hunger Games. You're basically competing for the same people's attention, the same people's resources, you know, a little a very limited um, amount of time, I feel like. And so you're competing against all these clubs at your school. For example, Mountainside is a very big school. So we have, I want to say, like at least 50 clubs in our school, right? And so you are competing against all these other clubs for the times of potential members. And so I think the most important question that you can ask yourself is how are you going to set your club apart from the others? And so what I did <laughs> is I kind of, you know, I, one could say snoop, I would say, you know, doing my own research, you know, about what clubs are up to, you know, how often they met, you know, and what kinds of activities that they were doing. And I thought to myself, okay, well, how can my club do these things better than them? Do you know what I mean? And so um, I think that the big three things that we kind of focused on as a board was um, organization. And so it's simple things like um, having a, a club website, you know, where people can find all the links that they need and all the um, resources that they need um, to be part of the club. Um, things like sending out weekly recap emails. Um, I don't know, things like uh, making sure that everyone is in the loop, especially um, which was a challenge last year because, you know, people tend to be less engaged when they're online. And so making sure that, you know, you're individually reaching out to people to making sure that um, they're all, you know, aware of what's, what's happening in the club. Um, another big thing was um, we put a large focus on hosting community events. And so this, go back, this goes back to, um, I believe it was Erica section where she was talking about how to perform meaningful service and one of the questions was you know how can we reach how can our club reach people outside the Kiwanis family and so um, an example that my home club did was um, host a drive through trick or treat event um, to support you know the UNICEF's trick or treating um, program that's happening this month. And so what we did was we did a COVID safe drive through event for trick or treating, obviously, um, and um, we put a lot of effort into it. Um, we involved the whole school by um, taking candy donations for service hours um, for the entire school, um, not just our club, as well as, you know, obviously the event was open to the public. And so we ended up getting, I want to say, 250 cars. Um, and so 250 families, sorry, and um, we raised about $550 for UNICEF and our key club. Um, and so things like that, I think not only establishes your presence, you know, in the school, but also within the community to see that, to show people that um, Key Club is a legitimate club um, where things get done. And so, um, yeah, that definitely was not a thing for um, other clubs at our school. And so more people were drawn to it when they saw things like, you know, when our um, ASB account, you know, posted about our events and stuff. Um, and lastly, I think having a consistent social media presence was really helpful, especially during a time of Zoom. Um, and it's fitting now if we consider the hybrid setting because, you know, um, we live in a virtual world now. And so everything is online. Um, social media is probably the best form of communication for people our age. And so um, I noticed that other clubs, they posted, you know, you know, maybe like three times a month, but then they wouldn't post for another like four months. And then they would start, you know, it would just be very spotty. And so I think that um, having a consistent um, posting schedule, you know, to update members and whatnot was a good way to um, make sure that people knew that the club was running all year round instead of um, kind of slowly um, stop posting and stop informing um, as the school year got busier. So. Yeah, so pretty similar to what everyone else said for my club, we really, really went ham on the marketing and advertising. So of course, setting up a booth at your club state is essential. And, you know, you really need to appeal to these teenagers, like your demographic are teenagers. And I realized that to get their attention and stand out to them, you have to give them like free things, especially like free food. So in our club booth, we had a variety of brochures, like both Key Club and Kiwanis ones. We had posters and flyers. We even designed and printed our, out our own pins. And like teenagers, like even if they don't really care about what you're handing out, they'll take it anyways because it's free and they'll look at it. So we had a box of candy too. And every time, um, someone got candy we also put like our club label um, taped onto it so if they take the candy they will see like the location of our meetings when they are where they are and if they want like this information is super accessible to them if they want to come to a meeting and if you guys are also like a charter club hanging up your Kiwanis banner makes you look super professional and it'll naturally attract people as well and um, we also put like key club reminders in the school announcements every week, not only seeing when they are and where they are, but also what we're doing. So that can also help attract members. And 
um, having, a, like everyone else said as well, having a consistent social media presence is super important. So we put reminders on our Instagram, especially Instagram story, that's super helpful. And we had every exec officer or even like members, normal members share it on their stories as well. And um, in online, even like hybrid setting, I know it's so difficult and I honestly apologize because I don't have that much experience doing that. But um, you can kind of go for the same concept, maybe give out free things by doing like a giveaway. But instead of giving free things to everyone, maybe just do a bigger prize and like pick one winner. And you can meet up personally with the winners, like take a photo with them and show everyone that you are handing out free items. And yeah. Yeah, those are all good answers. I totally agree with the free things. Like at our school, there's someone in our club who literally gives out um, cookies at every meeting. So I'm just like, you don't get a cookie if you don't come to meetings, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So the next question is, uh, what is a unique out of the box recruitment tactic that can be useful to other clubs? Out of the box recruitment tactic. Um... Okay, so I felt that at the end of my second term, so the end of my senior year, we were average, We were about 250 members strong. And to be honest, at that point, it felt like we got everyone that we could have at our school. Like we, we, we've hit everyone at least three times throughout the year. If they weren't gonna join, they're not gonna join now. And so it was actually when, I actually never actually got to put this plan into motion, but it was actually gonna be my final project for my last four months in high school and as Hito president before COVID ruined it all, um, was to actually establish a, a builder's club at our local middle schools. Uh, we, had a build, we had a middle school like right across the street from our high school. We had one like just down the road, I would say like four blocks, maybe five. And I, I mean, I was that my thinking there was, okay, we've got everyone that we can in high school to be honest. Let's just let this means that we need to plant the seeds earlier. We need to get people excited about Key Club earlier and get the knowledge about Key Club dispensed, um, you know, sooner earlier. I want people, I want, I want eighth graders to want to come to high school to join Key Club. Um, that was kind of my thinking there. And uh, to be honest, that is an untested theory. Maybe some of you guys with high schools, with middle schools, with uh, builders clubs can. Um, give me some evidence to like back back me up or shoot me down, but that was a plan that I have in place and that I kind of regret not being able to put it to action. But yeah, so establishing a feeder club at your middle school. Yeah, so Division sixty five actually has a feeder or, or a builders club. I don't know if it, if they're still active, but I do remember that the year or the the I guess how do I explain it like the eighth graders who were in that builders club when they came to high school, that class had the biggest um, member count, if that makes sense. I don't know, the, again, I don't know if that club is still active, but at least for that year it worked. So I, I'll attest to your, to your claim. <laughs> um, I think for us, um, again, another way I think of membership recruitment is you have to be kind of aggressive. Um, again, you're competing against so many clubs is that, you know, you have to get into people's faces or else they're not going to listen. They're not going to um, give you a second thought. Right. And so I think that um, probably the most unique tactic that our club used or one of the most unique tactics was um, doing something called door greeting. I don't know if every school does it, but at least for my school, um, the leadership program does door greet every single Friday. Um, it's quite a pain. I mean, it's fun when you're the ones greeting. Uh, for example, when it's my day to greet, it's fun. But then, you know, the, the walk into the building with like 25 kids screaming at you, you know, and like cheering, it's not fun. But um, door greeting, you know, it's a very, it's, you know, it's in, in people's faces. And so I think that, you um, especially what we did during like the months of September and October, especially was to door greet um, or to have the whole club um, door greet with key club posters and like being like, yeah, good morning, join key club, you know what I mean? And so to welcome um, students in, in into school um, in the morning. And so I think that people were kind of, you know, you can't really miss that, you know, when you're walking into a building, people are screaming at you with posters, you know, how can you, how can you, um, not see it right and so I think that that was definitely um, a kind of a unique tactic um, I have another one actually it, um, I learned this technique last year um, at the at last year's fall MGRC webinar when I was at the panelist then um, from the other panelists that was um, 
in the panel with me, duh. Um, and he said that um, what his club does is um, emailing middle school leadership teachers um, at, towards the end of the school year and saying, hey, we're a key club, we're a community service club. We're looking for students who are um, dedicated, you know, who are interested in leadership, who um, already have a commitment to service, you know, can you recommend some students that we can reach out to to join our club? And I think that that was really smart because, um, you know, when, when your school is so large, you know, um, it sometimes it feels um, some people, some freshmen especially may feel scared to, you know, go to a club meeting themselves um, on their own. And so I think that personally sending them an email or a text or whatever saying, hey, this teacher recommended you for Key Club. You know, this is what we do. Would you want to come to the next meeting? I think, um, I think puts, a, I guess, a call to action to them and also, um, you know, is a good persuasive technique. And so I think that um, that comment, you know, has stayed with me for the last like year and a half. And uh, um, this past year, last last year, um, our club used it and it was really successful. So. Yeah, so for my key club, we actually have a first meeting of the year tradition. So like I said before, to attract teenagers, food, especially free food is so effective. So every first meeting of the year, we would not only have free food, but we would put a really fun competitive spin to it. So we would have each exec bring like a homemade good or a big good, large portions, of course, so everyone can enjoy it. And everyone would try each exec's individual item, and then we'd go up to our whiteboard and basically vote for which one they like the best. So at the end, one of the execs would be declared the winner, and it would just be like a really fun and energetic activity um, to get everyone involved and also enjoy free things. It's like a baking competition within the exec team. And, you know, like people, especially new members, when they see the energy and the fun dynamic between the execs and the members, seeing how hyped everyone is, how everyone is enjoying themselves, that makes them want to be part of the club. It's so appealing to look at, and it really attracts others, like that high energy. So, yeah, just um, anything like super like competitive or fun or like involving your members would be a great activity. Yes, I totally agree with that. Energizing members totally is like a draw in, I guess, like makes them want to join. So uh, for their fourth question, what are some good ways to get your entire club involved with recruitment? Do you have any examples from during your officer term? So I'm actually going to backtrack and because I forgot that I had another answer for three that I forgot to say um, out of the box um, uh, recruitment strategies. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I think was pretty successful that we did was a little bit unorthodox was I thought, okay, we got, we've talked to most of the kids. If we can't convince them. How can we convince them without convincing them? I thought, okay, parental pressure. So it was actually one of our recruitment strategies my second year as resident to get in front of as many parents as we could and tell them about Key Club and why their kid should join Key Club. And so tangibly that meant actually uh, trying to get, get inside the PTA email list, trying to get inside the PTA newsletter um, when they have parent, parent like conference teacher night, trying to, get, uh, trying to get in that big auditorium room. And so I know at least a few kids that join Key Club through parental pressure. So <laughs> it is a strategy that worth considering if you guys are comfortable with that. Um, but on to number four, um, what are some way, good ways to get your entire club involved with recruitment? <laughs> so something we actually did um, a, way, uh, a little while back was we actually had one meeting uh, middle first fall semester where it was a, uh, where we asked everyone, everyone uh, for our next like November meeting, it's actually going to be a, a bring a friend meeting because we were actually doing a big service project that day. And so uh, everyone, and uh, the, of course there was, as we've talked about multiple times before, uh, there was also food incentive for every friend you bought, you brought, uh, you got one cookie. And so as people were bringing their friends and training them in for cookies and it, it was a blast. There was a huge service project, we had a huge turnout. And it wasn't, it honestly wasn't um, meant to be a recruitment strategy, but I, I definitely know a few kids, few friends that came along um, and that stayed for the rest of the year. And so that was really exciting. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to Allison. 
Yeah, my response is really similar to Chan Mook's. Um, it's kind of like, <laughs> I think of it like it's kind of like a pyramid scheme. So what you what you do is you tell your member, your current members, hey, recruit as many people as possible and we'll give you points for it. We'll give you food for it. Whatever the incentive is, bring your friends and we'll give you something in return, right? And so, you know, then their friends turn into, okay, I want the same thing. You know, I want the same incentive. So let me bring some of my friends. So it just keeps kind of multiplying. And so for what, what we did is um, we had to, we said that um, if the, if the friend that they brought um, registered to be an official member, then they get an incentive because then, you know, kids can just bring anyone and just be like, hey, can you just come along with me to this like five minute meeting so I can get free food? And it's like, well, then you're, I feel like your membership recruitment isn't very sustainable, you know? And so what we did is um, like, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought is yeah, we, they had to be an official registered member and then they got the incentive. And then, you know, you can, um, I think with any way of promotion, you can involve members by, um, for example, you know, if you're, if you're planning to have a table at the club brush or club fair, you know, making it a service project to get the, to get everyone to um, make posters, you know, that could be a fun activity. Or um, what my club did um, during my presidency was we made a promotional video um, right before school started. And what we did was we offered key club points for, anyone who wanted to um, have a part in it. And so I think that, you know, opening up the club, uh, opening up the opportunity for the entire club to participate in membership recruitment, um, I think really um, sets a tone for the rest of the year because it's like, it's not just the officers clubs, it's, it's your guys' club too, right? And so throughout the year, even if it's not a specific project, um, all year long, they're saying, hey, you should join Key Club, you know what I mean? Even when they're not asked to, or even when they're not being provided with incentives. Yeah, so my answer is actually really similar to the previous two as well. So when you're doing any marketing tactic, I feel like nothing is as effective as referrals. Like you can hand out brochures and posters and everything. But at the end of the day, people trust the words of their friends, like the people who they already know more than anything, because they trust that those people won't lie to them, won't sugarcoat anything. And that's why personal testimonies are so important, especially positive ones. Like you want your members to be speaking highly of Key Club. Like you, it's so important to give meaning to being a a member of the club and give it value like make your members feel important feel like they want to be more and more involved with the club do info sessions on the organizations and the charities that you're raising money for so people can feel like they're really contributing to something really meaningful like they're important and they're a part of something bigger and like also have fun activities where your members enjoy themselves because once that happens people are bound to tell their friends about it and word of mouth like just people talking to their friends is actually so powerful and i would really recommend clubs to implement a recruitment strategy that takes advantage of this like um, for my club personally, every time we attracted a new member, we would notice that gradually their entire friend group would start to eat lunch there at our club meetings. And um, that really increased our membership and filled up our club meetings. And because like people have mob mentality, and if you guys don't know what it is, it's basically that people want to be doing what everyone else is doing. They want to fit in. So once they see a really full club, they want to be part of that club too. And they start coming and seeing what's up. And even if they're just initially there just to eat lunch and not really interested in becoming part of the club, they'll slowly listen to your know, your announcements and your activities and your club agendas and become enticed to be involved as well. Um, so I've seen like many clubs implement different strategies of this, like what everyone else did before. You know, if you come and you bring a friend, you get a cookie and everything. So that's a really good way to make use of the members you already have to get new ones. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And that goes along with retention too, because like if you have your friends around you, then you're going to be more interested in key club as well. So moving on to open floor, thank you Chanwook, Allison, and Gloria for giving us such a good insight on all things membership growth and retention. Can we get a round of applause for them in the chat? To conclude tonight's webinar, we will now move into the open floor Q&A. Please feel free to type your questions into the chat, use the raise your hand feature, or privately DM it to any of the committee members.
I see one question that was privately sent in. Um, it's to our panelists. Um, why is membership recruitment and retention important to you? Um, and what are some good ways for key clubbers to see the value in recruitment, thus keeping them motivated throughout the service year? And anyone can take that question. Um, I can, I can take, take this one. I'll just go. Um, so I think that membership recruitment and retention is obviously very important. Um, and it's something that we all talk about a lot, but maybe don't reflect on why we talk about it so much. Um, obviously, um, as Chanuk was saying, getting a whole bunch of members at the beginning of the year is great, but especially as the year goes on and people get more busy, especially around spring sports time and that kind of thing, um, you start to lose membership. And um, that's bad for a couple of reasons. You know, it can um, oftentimes make it harder to get those people back the next year. Um, it can kind of, a lot of times, I think we've probably all experienced that as the year goes on, your service kind of winds down and there's lots of service opportunities between maybe September, December time and not so many, maybe like April to June, um, excuse me. And, if your membership is dwindling, it just makes it all the harder, all the more hard to um, uh, complete meaningful service and help your community. Um, and really just like the more the merrier in a community service organization, you know, um, the more people that you can get out there helping, the more people who can spread the word about your district project, or um, if you have 50 people bringing in one can of food instead of 12, you know, that makes a big difference. And so um, having a big club, as long as it's sustainable, is, um, you know, always encouraged and always really helpful. Awesome. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, another question in the chat by Lewis Logan. What advice do you have for a Kiwanis advisor to be helpful in recruitment and retention? I think um, I'll that... take this one. Oh, or not. oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Ah, okay. Thank you, Allison. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I think this is advice for Kiwanis advisors in general. Um, no, so it's not specific to recruitment. Um, but I think I learned the best. I think I got the most out of my relationship with my Kiwanis advisor, Ms. Kalina. Um, when she let me make my own mistakes and really learn from them, um, especially when it came to member recruitment and retention. Um, because I do believe that Key Club being a peer-to-peer -peer club, I think is a very important thing. And so I would say making sure that as an advisor, uh, making sure and holding your officers accountable you know, especially as we kick off, because how you kick off a year really sets the tone for the rest of the year is really important. Um, but I would say, I, I don't believe that a Kiwanis advisor should ever do anything directly for a club when it comes to recruitment or anything else. They should be there to support their officers, but then nothing more because, you know, it is the officer's club, it is the student's club. Awesome, thank you, Chanwook. Um, uh, one question for Gloria is, is there anything specific that Canadian clubs can do um, uh, that makes them more unique um, considering they there's only two Canadian divisions where, while everyone else is located in the United States? Um, that is a really great question. Um, I think for Canadian clubs, um, uh, is this question like in terms of membership and recruitment still? Yes. Okay. Um, I think for Canadian clubs, it's it's not often that you see a club that is involved in Canada and also involved in the United States. And you actually have that opportunity to go to the United States during DECON and meet everyone else who is there. And I think, um, like I mentioned this in one of my answers, it's really important to emphasize that international um, aspect of Key Club because it really gets a lot of people interested. Like, oh, wow, we get to go to the US. Like, that's so cool. Um, we get to be connected to all these people in a different country. Like, that's so cool. And it's also like um, a selling point to mention that, oh, like we are all, um, one of the only clubs in Canada in our division. Like we're like, you know, special. <laughs> or like, you know, 
um, not, um, you know, like the majority. And that really makes them want to become a part of something that is so unique because there is really nothing else like that in Canada, like a club that is so connected to the United States. Awesome. Thank you, Gloria. Um, uh, now, since it is almost eight, we'll conclude our open floor question and answer. Um, if you do have any more questions that the MGRC can assist you with, please reach out to me at membership at pnwqclub.org. I'd like I would like to give a huge thank you uh, to our presenters and panelists, and of course, all of you who were able to stay um, with us throughout the entire presentation tonight. We hope you take something meaningful away from tonight's session. For our ACOVID Club representatives here tonight, please remain on the Zoom call for further instructions on the raffle we have for you guys. Have a great rest of your night, everyone, and thank you especially for our panelists for joining us tonight.